We continue now at the top of Daf Chof Beis Amud Aleph in Maseches Baba Kama. This is Baba Kama Daf Twenty Two A. The Gemara asks Vatanya, but didn't we learn in a Brisa Hakelav Hagadish Shadolgu Bein Mel Malo Lamata Bein Mel Mata Lamala? If you have a dog or a kid goat that jump, whether it jumps from up to down or from down to up, its paturn is going to be putter. And we just learned on the previous Amud that if the animal, if the dog or the kid goat jump from the top to the bottom, it's actually chayiv in that case. And the Gemara says Tir Gemara Papa a Papa answers that in this particular brisa the apech mepach that the animals are acting in an abnormal fashion kalba bezikira when we're talking about a dog it's talking about where the dog is leaping that's something that's not normal the gadya when we're talking about the case of the kid goat we're talking about where it is climbing that's also not normal and that's why we say that that kind of damage is potter but the gemara asks paturim but if that's the case why are they totally potter you shouldn't be totally exempt and the gemara explains potter means nezek shalom it means potter from nezek shalom from the full damage the chayyim but you have to pay half damages because that's considered to be a kind of damage that occurs with a shinoi with some kind of change from the normal behavior. Rashi explains bizikira kafitza. We're talking about zikira by the dog, meaning to say that the dog is leaping, and sricha by the goat. We're talking about sricha shenowitzi parnov bekosel. It's talking about where it puts its nails into the wall to climb. Shein darko bekach. That's not normal. Meshunim heim. Those are all strange kinds of damages, and that's why the Gemara ultimately says that it's chazi nezik. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, HaKelev Shenatel, if the dog takes a biscuit and then takes the biscuit over to a pile of grain, so on the biscuit you pay Nezek Sholem, but on the pile of grain which catches fire, the amount is Chatzin Nezek. And the Gemara says, Itmar, it was stated the following, Machlokas Amoroim, Rabbi Yochanan Amar Isho Mishom Chetzi, Rabbi Yochanan says that when we say by fire, we say that the person is chayv to pay for damage caused by his fire. That's considered the same as if he shot arrows. For Eishlakish Amar, but Eishlakish says, Isho Mishom Amono, that his fire is considered to be like his property, like let's say a person's shore, a person's money does damage, his property does damage like an axe. That's the same thing by a person's fire that's considered to be like his property. And the Gemara says, Now why doesn't Eishlakish say like Rabbi Yochanan? Why doesn't he agree with Rabbi Yochanan that a fire is like shooting an arrow? Amar Lach, so he'll say to you, that a person's arrows that comes from his own strength but high but a fire doesn't come from the person's strength that goes on its own so therefore it's not comparable to chetzio Rabbi Yochanan, my time alone, Rabbi Yochanan, why doesn't Rabbi Yochanan agree to Rabbi Yochanan that Isho Mishom Mamoto, that a fire is like a person's property, it's like his property did damage? Amar Lach, so he'll say to you, Mamona Isbe Mamosha, person's property that has substance, Halesbe Mamosha, but when it comes to fire, fire does not have any substance, you cannot compare the two. And Rashi explains, Isho Hasholeach Hasabeira, Isho means his fire, meaning a person causes a fire, Mishom Chetzio, it's like his arrows, Chayvo Hakosov, that's why the Pasuk says that he's Chayv, according to Rabbi Yochanan, Diyuka Ovid, as if he threw an arrow into damage. Mishumamon, Reish Lakish says it's like his property. Kishoru, Boro, Sheziko, it's like his ox or his pit that caused damage. And Rashi says, Right now we think that the difference between Rabbi Yochan and Reish Lakish is, Let's say a person causes a fire with a coal, but it's not his coal. And according to Rabbi Yochan, he's Chayyab because it's still considered his arrow. But according to Reish Lakish, since this wasn't actually his property, so according to Reish Lakish, we would say Pater in that case. High lav mikocha, fire doesn't come from the person's strength. The Eish me'ela holeches v'dolekes l'merachok, a fire goes on its own. Ha'les be ma'moshe, and then the Gemara said that a fire has no substance. The shaleves hiyam azekes, because it's the flame that causes the damage. The ain l'mamish, which has no substance. Hilka chichayve rachmano mishum chetzi with the chayve. Therefore, it must be that when the Torah says chayve, the Torah is saying chayve because it's considered like his arrow. And the Gemara continues to Nan. We learned in our Mishnah Hakelav Shanat al Charara Vachulu. Again, the case is that the dog caused the fire. I can understand our Mishnah according to the one who says that a fire is chayev because it's like his arrows. So Chetzio the Kelev. So essentially, in the case in our Mishnah, it's like the arrows of the Kelev of the dog. You're responsible for what your dog does. But according to the one who says that Aish is chayev because it's considered to be like his property is damaged, is damaging. That's the opinion of Reish Lakish. So Hayesh Lav Memono Debal Kelev, who this fire over here, is not the property of the owner of the dog, and so therefore, why are we saying Chayef? 
And the Gemara says, Amar Lach Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish will respond to you to explain our Mishnah. Hachav and Mayaskin, and here, what is the case? The Adya Aduye, the case over here is, is that he threw it, the Al Kharara Mishalim Nezek Sholim, and the Kharara and the biscuit you're going to pay Nezek Sholim, the Al Mokom Gachelis Mishalim Chatsi Nezek, and on the area where the Gachelis went, where the coal went, he's going to pay half damage, the Al Gadish Kula Potter, but on the entire stack of grain, we're going to say Potter. And Rashi explains first Chetzio the Kelafein. Again, it makes sense if you say that Eit Isho Misham Chetzio because it's the arrows of the dog. The Havalei Tsroros. It's essentially a case of Tsroros. Hilgach Meshalim Chatzin Ezek. Therefore, the payment would be in the Mishnah Chatzin Ezek. V'yadam Hamadlik Misham Hachi Chayev Nezek Shalim Shein Din Tsroros Badam. If a person causes a fire, it's Nezek Shalim because there's no concept of Tsroros by a person. In other words, we can fully explain the Mishnah according to this. Any damage that the dog does directly is going to be Nezek Shalim. Your Chayev on the biscuit Nezek Shalim on the stack of grain, which is a fire, it's essentially Tsroros, so therefore it's going to be Chatzi Nezek, that would explain the Mishnah. But according to Reish Lakish, who says Isho Mishu Mimono, Lav Mimono Debal Kelefu, so over here, it's not the property of the owner of the dog, Ela Debal Kharar, it's the person who owned the biscuit, it's actually his property. And the Gemara answered, Da'adi Aduye Shazarku, the case over here is, is that the animal actually threw the Gachelis, actually threw the Kharara, Vial Mokom Gachelis, Mokom Shanofla Gachelis Sham, meaning to say, the exact Area where the coal hit, so there Mishalim Chatzin Nezek is going to be Chatzin Nezek. The Tsroros Hein Vakelav Asan that's considered Tsroros from the Kelav. Lishnachrin the Mishuna, who or you could say that it's considered Mishuna. It's Chatzin Nezek because it's a strange kind of damage. But then according to this, we al Gadish Kulei Potter, but on the rest of the stack of grain, he's actually Potter. The Isho Misha Mimono because the fire part it really is a fire in general is only a problem if it's his property. The High Lav Mimono who and here it's not as considered his property. With Tsroros, like a remember, you can't say Tsroros over here, because it's not Tsroros from the point where the coal hits and then spreads, that's going on its own. Now, what's the reason why we're saying that the case is specifically where he threw it? The reason why we're saying the case is where the animal threw it, because if he just placed it, so then we wouldn't be able to say then it's a normal type of damage, and on the area where you place the coal, it's Nezek Shalim. To Urachayhu, Litol Kharar, Ima Gachelis. It's normal to take the Kharara together with the Gachelis, to take the biscuit together with the coal. And so, therefore, it has to be where it was thrown. That's the only way that we can really explain Chatzin Nezek. Either we're going to say that it's a Chatzin Nezek because, either we're going to say it's a Chatzin Nezek because of Tsroros, or we're going to say it's a Chatzin Nezek because it's Meshuna, but that's the only way to explain Chatzin Nezek. And the Gemara continues according to this explanation for Rabbi Yochanan. According to Rabbi Yochanan, we'll say the Anchanuche that the animal actually placed down. The Charora and the Gacheles. Al Charora vi al Mokom Gacheles, Meshalim Nezek Sholim. And according to that, and the Charora and the area where the Gacheles was placed down, you're going to pay Nezek Sholim. Vi al Hagadish, but on the Gadish, it's considered to be like the arrows of the dog. Meshalim Chatzin Nezek, you'll pay Chatzin Nezek, because that's considered to be like Tsroros. And Rashi explains, Reb Yochanan, Domer Isham Misham Chetzi, according to Reb Yochanan, who says that a fire is considered as arrows, Mukim Labe de Ancha, Ki Orche. So then the animal just placed it down in the normal fashion. The Al Charora Nezek Sholim. The shein here on the biscuit is nezek shalim because it's shein. The amakom gachelis nezek shalim the orchei on the area where the gachelis was placed again nezek shalim that's normal. Of yadayim of it, it did it directly. The agadish kula chatzin nezek, but on the rest of the stack of the grain, it's chatzin nezek. The chetzu the kelafein the 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 that's considered to be the arrows of the kelaf. The einu tsroros, therefore, it's considered to be tsroros. And the Gemara continues. Tashma, come in here a proof from the following mishnah gumol ton pishton. If you have a camel that is loaded with flax, the other brishas and it's walking. And then it enters its flax inside the store. And the, the flax catches fire on the candle of the storekeeper. And then the animal goes and walks and causes a fire for a whole building, burns down a building. So then the owner of the camel is chayev because the candle was actually inside the store and the camel should not have went in the store and caught fire. Now if the candle was placed by the storekeeper outside of the store, so then it's the Chenvani's fault, so then Chenvani Chayev, so then the storekeeper is Chayev, he has to pay for all that damage that was done to the building. Rabbi Yehuda, Omer Rabbi Yehuda says, B'ner Chanukah Potter, if it was Ner Chanukah that was placed outside of the store, so then the owner of the store is Potter, because it's a mitzvah to place the Ner Chanukah in Rosh Hashanah because of Pirsume Nisa. And the Gemara says, B'Shalom Alaman Dom Reisho Misham Chetzo, I understand this Mishnah, according to the one who says that fire is Chayev because it's considered like his arrows, meaning again, according to Rabbi Yochanan, so Chetzo de Gomel, so 
then it makes sense because again it's like the air the arrows of the camel you have a situation here where the camel enters into the store the flax catches fire and that that fire that spreads and then burns down the building is the arrows of the camel and that's why we say in that situation that the owner of the camel is going to be chayef but according to the one who says that Aish is chayef because it's his property that's doing the damage who again we have the same question this fire is not the property of the owner of the camel this fire came from the owner of the store why would the owner of the camel ever have to pay and the Gemara says, Amar Lach Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish will respond to you. Hacha b'mayaskin, and here, what do you have to say the case is? B'mesach seches kol abira kula. The case is, is that the animal actually lights directly. It's not a spreading fire, but actually directly touches the entire building with the fire, and that causes the fire to happen directly. So even if it is not the mom, even if it is not the moment of the owner of the camel, the owner of the camel will be chayev. As Rashi explains, b'mesach seches as kol abira shahagomol over b'fnei kol abira. The camel is actually walking to every part of the building, rubbing up against it, it's like the whole thing is the place of the actual coal, and in that case, therefore, we are going to say it's not a spreading fire, in that case, we're going to say it's a direct damage, but in a normal case of a fire where the fire spreads on its own, it would not be considered to be the arrows of the animal, and so therefore, again, that's why in this case, the owner of the camel is going to be chayef. But the Gemara says, if so, if you're going to say the case is again that the animal is essentially directly damaging, so let's look at the end of the mission we just quoted. It said that if the storekeeper places his candle outside of the store, so then the storekeeper is chayiv. Now, if the, if the case over here is, is that the animal is essentially directly causing the damage, so am I chayiv? So why should the storekeeper be chayiv in such a situation? The Gemara says, well, the case is, it's the animal actually isn't moving at all, is standing still. We'll see Rashi in a moment. But the Gemara says again, but if it's standing and again causes direct damage, it doesn't really answer anything. For sure, the storekeeper should be putter, and the Balgamal, the owner of the camel, should be chayiv. Rashi says, Seches means medalekas causing a fire. Bishamda, the Gemara answered that the animal was standing. Amar hagomel b'mekomo, the Gemara understood this to mean that the animal is standing in its place. Bishichzech has called habir and caused the entire bira, the entire building, to burn. Shaisa chavilasu gedola keneged kol habira, meaning to say that this bundle of flax was as large as the entire building that burned down, so it directly touched the entire building. Again, it's essentially the same answer. The animal was just standing still instead of moving. Vagemar lo shavak lasuke the Milsey Parker, the Gemara actually doesn't doesn't leave enough time to finish its answer and right away asks, that's the same thing. Certainly the owner of the of the camel, if it's causing such damage just by standing there, causing this direct damage, the owner should have quickly moved the animal away. And of course it's the animal of the gomel that should be chayiv in that case. It should not be the owner of the store, even though he put the fire outside of the store. And so that's why the Gemara still hasn't really answered the question. Certainly in the seifa, even though the chenvani put the fire Fire, the candle outside the store, the storekeeper should be potter, and the owner of the camel should be chayiv. How do we explain the seifa? And the Gemara says, Amar Ravuna Bar Manoch Mishmei De Ravika. Ravuna Bar Manoch says in the name of Ravika, here's how we can explain the Mishnah, that we can also explain the seifa. Hacha B'mayaskin, here, what are we talking? Kegon Sha'am Dalahatzal Mimeha. The animal is standing still in order to urinate. As Rashi says, Ba'am Dalahatzal Mimeha, Da'onasu V'sichsacha. The case is it was really an accident. The animal stood still because, again, it had to urinate. V'sichsacha and cause this entire fire, and that's how we can explain the Reish and Seifa. The Gemara will explain in the next Amud. We will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Chav Beis, Amud Beis.